know, it feels like just yesterday we ripped out our old electric motor and replaced it with the Hughes Ocean Vault system. And I know the box behind me does have a huge Ocean Vault logo on it. So you're probably thinking, what the f? guys we are hauled out for the weekend because we are finally installing something we've been pursuing ever since we decided to go electric well, as you guys may or may not know about this time last year we ripped out our DIY electric motor that we built from a forklift and that we used for the first five years of sailing uh, and we replaced it with this used um, Ocean Bolt system that we got from one of our followers and it's worked really really well actually as far as better efficiency and pushing the boat and ease of use all that stuff has been great but it didn't quite solve the one problem that we've been trying to solve with an electric motor ever since we first came up with the idea and installed it on our boat and that's regen the ability to create power while we're sailing uh, this system technically does it and it does it okay, but it works much better on a faster boat, like a catamaran that can sail at eight plus knots. And we just can't do that consistently enough to actually be able to generate consistent power to charge our batteries back up. The power that it creates while we're sailing is sort of just enough to kind of run our house loads, our refrigerator, autopilot, that kind of stuff. Um, but the sort of holy grail of electric motors is to be able to motor out a little bit, you know, leave the slip or leave the anchorage, hoist your sails, sail all day, charge the batteries back up, and be able to anchor again and be on anchor for a couple of days. So uh, this system didn't quite do that for us. And in the meantime, Ocean Volt has developed a much better system for generating power while you're sailing. So even before we installed this, we've been in contact with Ocean Volt, asking them lots of questions and trying to see what they have and, and, it, and how well it works. And since installing the system and sailing on the Salona and getting in contact with them more and more about the servo prop, we actually ended up collaborating with Ocean Volt now and we're gonna be installing their new servo prop on our boat so we can get better regen and also be able to test it and send back like real world data of people actually out using the system, charging their batteries, living off of it and help them develop some of the other exciting projects they have in the pipeline. So we've been super happy with this one in the last year and now we're gonna install the new servo prop and hopefully it'll work even better. So the most difficult part about this whole project was last year when we ripped out the shaft drive system that we had and installed the sail drive system and cutting the hole and fiberglassing and mounting the plate. That was the most difficult part. And now that that's all done, we can actually just unbolt this, take six bolts, four bolts to pull the sail drive off, two bolts to pull the motor off and just drop the new motor on. It fits in the same bracket and it wires up the same way. We're also installing new components in the rest of the system too because the ones we have are relatively old. So a lot of the little bugs and little tweaks that we've been noticing, they've already fixed. And so we're installing a whole new system so that we'll be able to test and modify and give critique on a new system, not an old system. Well, we've unpacked all of the parts from the crate downstairs and because the system is 
very, very, very similar in most ways to what we already have installed. The actual swapping between our old one and this one should be relatively straightforward. All the parts should fit and we should just be able to button everything together. Uh, but I think the part I'm sort of dreading the most is crawling into the V-Birth to find the box full of the tools we need to disassemble the sail drive and remove it because that's kind of the biggest pain in the butt. So we're gonna do that first. Everything in here is stuff that we don't necessarily need to access on like a daily basis or for any maintenance reasons. But when we have big projects like installing a new motor, it all needs to come out. Well, on a boat where storage space is super limited, we tend to store things based on accessibility, like how often we'll need to access them. So things like stuff we need for a haul out or for major refit all get stored up in the V-Birth because we don't need sort of instant access to any of it, but it does make getting it out a pain in the ass. Although in here is all the tools we're gonna need to pull out the old drive and hopefully install a new one. So the propeller that's on this sail drive is called a gory folding propeller and it works great. As soon as you put it in forward or reverse, it flips open because of the weight and the centrifugal force flipping it out. Um, and forward and reverse work really, really well. The problem is regen while we're sailing. You give it a little bit of forward throttle so that it pops the blades open. But then while we're sailing, the blades actually fold back a little bit and they're not as efficient in the water at generating electricity. So we're gonna pop this off, replace it with the new one, and then I'll explain why the new one's so much better. This looks pretty good for a year. <laughs> Not bad, we've, uh, we've been in the water for almost a year, and the only barnacles growing on the bottom of our boat are on the mounting bolts for the sail drive. It's not bad. We've never cleaned the bottom of our boat either. I don't think we've even gone for a swim in that year. Now the sail drive's off, uh, it's time to pull the fridge out and remove the old motor and then pop the new motor on before we can bolt the new server prop sail drive on. Taking the refrigerator out is probably the second least favorite part of this whole project. <laughs> Well, I know a lot of you guys might be wondering why we can't just take the servo prop sail drive, the skeg and the propeller underneath, and just bolt it onto our old motor. And although these two motors look similar and the internal components are quite similar, one is designed for the servo prop and one is designed for the folding propeller, and the parts aren't exactly interchangeable. Now that the old one's out, I'll pull out the old motor controller as well, and then we'll pop the new motor in, bolt the new sail drive on the bottom, and uh, a bit more rewiring, we'll be good to go. Time to pop this little guy into place. This way. Oh, I love that they didn't hardwire the cables in too. That's super nice. All right, going in. Yeah. 
All right, we've got both sail drives off, and as you can see, this is obviously the old one. This is the nice new shiny one. Uh, the main difference between these is that the servo prop has a servo motor in the bottom of it, controlled by this cable that actually controls the pitch of the propeller blades. So when we're sailing, it'll be feathered and there'll be no drag on the system at all. And then motoring, it'll adjust the pitch in forwards or reverse. And then in regen, it will adjust the pitch to a different angle. So it gets much more efficient regen because the blades are sort of locked open in the prime position. What about this Put the first, thing? that will work on it later. Put one in. A bit more. All right, now, um, if you wouldn't mind climbing up and helping me thread this through. Yeah. More? Slowly? Yeah, keep going. Pull. All right. This will be the same thing as it was before, like, wiggle, wiggle, move, move, wiggle, wiggle, move, move. Yeah, this is like the, <laughs> this is about the third time we've installed one of these. <laughs> We're like, uh, starting to be professionals. <laughs> We're probably one of the most uh, ocean vault installers. <laughs> right. We've installed three of these now, so yeah, I guess that probably puts us in a pretty uh, elite league of people who have installed three ocean vault motors before. <laughs> a couple of boat yards have installed more than one. A couple of uh, there's a couple of guys out there. Derek, the guy's helping us from the U.S. He's definitely installed more than one. Yeah, not many people have installed three. Well, all of the components are installed and we just did our initial tests and everything looks like it's working just fine. The propeller feathers the way it's supposed to and all the control systems are working and the cooling pumps are all working. So last thing to do is uh, spray some anti-foul on here and put some more propeller anti-foul on the propeller. Um, this Pelaclean, it's, uh, there's a couple of different names for this, but it works pretty well. We've been using it for the last three years and it seems to hold up really, really well. So. Put another coat of this on and uh, we'll be ready to launch. You got it?
Well, today is Norwegian National Day, and it's pretty much the biggest day of Norway. So, uh, there's a lot of things going on here in Tromsø, starting with a boat parade from this marina all the way to downtown. And since Uma is on the hard right now, we decided to take Coco instead. So, we have the whisker pole and a whole bunch of flags that we're going to use and fly all the colors and participate in the boat parade. <laughs> Got a bag of string, whisker pole. I think we'll make it work. <laughs> we'll, we'll make it work. <laughs> We're a little late to the party, but I think it's worth I think it. We'll catch up. <laughs> I don't think they're going that fast. All right. It was going so good, and then we hit like some wake, and then like it just all, all came just, apart. <laughs> they all just like died. It's this Canadian flag. Sorry, Check it buddy. Out. Sorry, Canada. Can't represent you today. It doesn't have the structural integrity that the other flags. Maybe do, we you know? just put like Uma in Norway. I mean, the the, the, the two flags that seem to be like. That's probably a much better idea. Yeah, just leave the, all the other flags out. I don't know how to take them off. <laughs> Cut it. I'm gonna need like some momentum though, or it's not gonna work. Do you want me to kind of go? I want you to either head into the wind or motor, yeah. A lot of people are wearing their very traditional Norwegian outfits. They're like suit and ties and stuff, motoring by. It's fantastic. <laughs> what do you think of our uh, flying? <laughs> I feel like if there was more wind, it would have been a much better idea. It's still flying. Yeah, totally. We just pull over here in downtown uh, next to our friend's boat, Nacho. We're gonna have some coffee and then we're going to go walk around town and see see what's up today. National Day coffee to start the day. Right. It's like a lunch, it's like a lunchtime coffee. Mm -hmm. I'm not driving home. It's uh, finished though, but. Start the day right. Yes. <laughs> a little dash of inspiration for the day. Mean it. <laughs> Skull. Skull. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Coffee cheers. It's. Since we're not clipping into a bridge. <laughs> yeah. It's really kind of great.
Oj. Oj, har du Men Mm. So Nacho said that apparently on National Day is a very popular thing to eat ice cream all day. Mm -hmm. So we have to do the most Norwegian thing. <laughs> My ice cream is falling apart. <laughs> wow, that was a big one. I don't know. That's medium. That's medium. That's a medium. I can get behind this tradition. It's also like the first day where it's warm and sunny enough that ice cream is like a well-deserved treat, not just like a winter necessity. <laughs> the ice cream's actually melting. A couple of weeks ago, I don't think it would have melted. No. It would have instead of a softy, a hardy. Is it flying? <laughs> I'm uh, representing Norway right now. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that was surprisingly very efficient. <laughs> That was a good time. <laughs> it worked out really well actually with the dinghy. And I think everybody was watching ours uh, like we were crazy, but you know what? It, it was fun. And yeah, the, the marina now has a bit of a barbecue going on, so we're gonna put everything back inside and we're gonna get some food. Nice that it was sunny yesterday because today's back to feeling a little more springtimey. But um, going back in the water today, so that's good. I'm excited. I'm excited to get out and test this new motor actually. It's been a long time in the waiting. All right, well, we've got the sails out. Uh, first reef in the main, first reef in the head sail, and it's still blowing 15, sometimes gusting the 20, so we're still pinching uh, out into the bigger fjord here, but we're gonna turn regen on and see what kind of numbers we can get. So far, we are averaging right around six and a half speed over ground. Uh, and it says seven knots through the water, so we might still have some current against us, but sort of hard to tell because we haven't calibrated our water speed in a while. But let's say six and a half speed over ground and we're making 300 watts. Um, this system definitely seems to not fluctuate nearly as much as our old one did. So we've, we're hovering right at 300, 320 watts and we're sailing at six and a half knots and we're pinching too, which is technically the worst point of sail to get regen. So we'll keep holding this for a little while longer, see what we can average and then fall off, go on a beam reach and then turn around, go downwind on the way home. But yeah, so far it's um, at least double, if not maybe two and a half times more than what we were getting with the old one. So that's a pretty good sign. Oh, it's, it's actually All right, the wind and our conditions are really, really stable. Uh, 
We've been holding at six and a half knots speed over ground for four or five minutes now. So I'm actually gonna shut it off and see if we go any faster. I don't know if we'll really be able to notice or not. All right, now it's off. I'm still gonna hold 35 apparent. We just went up to 6.6, 6.7. I'm gonna turn it back on again. Six point seven, six point eight. I really don't notice the difference. The wind picked up when I shut it off before. Yeah, we're still at six point seven, six point eight, six point nine. <laughs> Sailing faster. Which is actually going faster with it on. Six point eight. I mean, like the thing is, everyone says. I mean, physics says that if you go from something that's feathering in the water to going to something that's dragging in the water, obviously. Theoretically, that's gonna slow you down. But in reality, when you're sailing, like our speed fluctuates probably two to three tenths of a knot anyway, just depending if you're going up or down, and we've damped it down quite a bit. But if if regen does slow us down, it's not noticeable. Let's put it that way. And we've been on two other boats regening as well, and it's the same thing. Like if it does slow you down, it's it's not enough to notice. So that's, that's a good thing. And we're still making 300 watts, which is awesome. All right, so we've been pinching for like 30 minutes and uh, now we're gonna tack and beam reach and probably put the rest of the head sail out and see if we can get some more numbers. All right, we have fallen off onto a beam reach, but the wind has also died down. It's only blowing 13 now instead of 20. So we're sailing along at about four and a half, five knots, and we're still making 200 to 250 watts of power, which is really good, actually. It means that at four and a half, five knots, we can cover our um, house loads, basically. And then anything above five, we can actually start charging up our battery bank. That's what it looks like so far, anyway. Uh, we'll keep sailing a little bit and keep getting some more numbers and at the end we'll put all this into a little chart and explain more. Uh, this is just to sort of like collect our data. I've got the Victron app open on the other side of the iPad and it's monitoring um, overall how much power like we're using and before with our old motor we were never able to go positive. Um, our boat generally we draw around 150 to 200 watts at any given point and so with the old motor uh, when we were regenning, it might go to like minus 100 or minus 50, but we're still always taking power out. Uh, but so far, even at four and a half, five knots, we still have our fridge and freezer and autopilot and stuff running. So we're still drawing around 200-ish, but we're able to get positive because we're putting in enough power that we're up into like the 30, 40, 100 watts positive. So that's, that's power back into our actual battery bank, which is really awesome. And we're sailing really slow right now too. <laughs> we still have a first reef in the main. So even at seven on the We have um, some pretty good and relatively consistent data and numbers. So uh, we're gonna fall off and go downwind for our last leg uh, back to the marina. I think I'm just gonna fall off this way. And on a beam reach, we were actually, uh, the wind picked back up a little bit. So we were able to get up to seven knots, speed over ground. 
and we were generating in that 450 to 500 watt range. We saw all the way up to 650. So that's really, really good. Now this is a very short test. We don't really want to go sailing out too much because we still have a lot of projects we want to finish, but um, it's a very good early indication that we're going to actually be able to charge up our batteries offshore on longer, you know, full day passages or overnight or extended passages. We'll actually be able to make some power. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, we, we really average offshore. We average between five and a half and six and a half knots. So, um, it looks like we'll be able to make plenty of power. Uh, I'm pretty happy about that. Actually, it's been a long time in the making. We're at this six years in now, and this has been our goal since we first decided to go electric was going to be able to charge up and make power offshore. So pretty excited. Um, we go downwind now back to the dock and eat some celebratory food, I think. Yeah!